Greetings, Israel. It's your brother, DFG. Hey, my brothers and sisters, especially the elders among us. I want you to pass this message on to our young brothers and our young sisters who are struggling, you know, out here. I'm going to say the streets, but I think you guys know when I say the streets, it, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, those are, you know, the street walkers or, or those who are risking their lives because of all the vices and everything else that are out there, you know, that, that portrays itself as hope, but it's nothing but destitute. So to the young brothers and sisters out there, I want to say something to you. First, I want to say to you guys, don't think that because, you know, we've we gotten a little gray in the beards or gray in the head that we don't reflect and we don't think. Because actually, some of us are thinking. And we're feeling your pain. You know, we come out through these messages and, you know, at least I do. I'm going to speak first person myself. I've come and I've shared many, many messages, thousands of messages now. And we talk about every little thing, whether it be global or whether it be, you know, domestically, things that are happening right here in these, you know, in these streets with Israel. And I want to say to my young brothers and sisters, you know, religion is the culprit. <laughs> and I don't know any other way to, 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 to clarify it just like that. Religion is the culprit. Religion entrapped us. Religion entrapped our parents. Religion told us to be passive. Religion told us to, to, to love our enemies, to embrace our poverty. Even told us that Yah is not faithful to us because we die in these streets. And in truth, my little brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. It's a lie. The fact of the matter is, we've always had a way out of this mess. But because of the wickedness of the heathens and the wickedness of, of many of your elders, we have taken the path of least resistance. We've taken the path that, well, if we just pray about it, if we just wait for it, if we just, you know, do ourselves, just do me. Let me get out here. Let me hustle. Let me do what I got to do to get out this mess that we're finding ourselves. Many of you were born into. It's understandable in truth. And let one elder finally take you know, the lead here and be transparent to you, brothers and sisters. I understand, you know, the suffrage. I understand the pain. I understand that you look for Yah or you look for the Savior, you look for the Creator or God, whatever word you use, and you have real questions <laughs> like, how in the hell should we serve you when you are constantly failing us? That is a real question. That's a legitimate question. And quite frankly, young brothers and sisters, that's a fair question. But somebody needs to remind you, because nobody reminded us, that we were led, you know, into this, 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 this chaos. We were led into this uh, deprivation. We were led to, to, to seek the abominable ways because at the end of the day, after all, how could God love us? How could he love us? He doesn't see my mama suffering. He don't see my daddy dying young. He don't see my friends and, and those I love dying in these streets. How could he love us if he allows those things to happen to us? Well, let me say to something. Let me say something to you. Let me be crystal clear here. In truth, the heathens, their religion, their culture, their system, this system that we're in, if you're in the United States, or wherever you are on this flat earth, this system was set up with one intention in mind, and that was destroy you and everything that looks like you, Israel. Our book Wanda, Psalms 83, he said they were confederate against us, that they were working hard to make sure that we were a non-people, we were a proverb or a byword, that we were trash, we were whores, we were tramps, we were niggers. With spicks. Because that's what they want you to believe. And they use religion to do it. I'm going to say something again to you, my brothers and sisters. That's not Yahuwah. That's not the hand of Yahuwah. 
That's not Yahuwah's disrespect or disregard for your pain, your suffering, the challenges that you face. Like us, you were born into it. But like some of us, we're awaking to it now. And in our awakening, you know what we realize, brothers and sisters? That God didn't forsake us. Yah didn't forsake us. We were taught to forsake him. In every way, in every imaginable way possible. To hate ourselves. To hate one another. To hate the community. To hate the skin that we're in. All lies. They lied to us because they feared us. They lied to us because they're not us. They lied to us because they can do nothing to replace us. So they connived. They got confederate. They spoke in their corners. They spoke in their government offices. They spoke in the church. And they told you just to be passive, just to wait, just to trust, just to believe. After all, Jesus died for your sins. That's a flat out fabricated, idolatrous, pagan lie. Y'all never forsake us, brothers and sisters. But how can you know that if you only know what we were programmed to know? Through a system, again, of straight up lies, thievery, murder, and oppression. I want to say this to you, and I want to say this to you crystal clear, young brothers and sisters. There's a way a greater way that was hidden from you because it was hidden from me. And that way is learning about ourselves, not through the books that they wrote, not through the history that they told. All that is exaggerated, fabricated, you know, polluted lies and distraction, misinformation to miseducate you. You are great people. You come from a line of a line, a lineage of kings and queens, powerful and mighty men, men that you would never know about because they never told you the truth about them. Whenever their names came up, or they say, Well, that's you know, Psalm 22, Psalm 23, King David wrote that. Oh, that's what, you know, I don't know, Proverbs said when David was when when Solomon talked about tra training up a child or a blessing of the Yahuwah, making a man rich and add no sorrow with it. That's Psalms, but you can they would give it back to, to, to the son of the writer of Psalms, your king, our king, one of the greatest warriors that ever walked the face of this flat earth, David. And he was a young leader, a young warrior, a man who loved his people so much that he put his life on the line to fight a giant, a man that was twice his size. You know what also he realized? He didn't need a gun. He didn't need a sword. He didn't need deception. He didn't need religion. <laughs> All he needed was trust. Because inside of that trust, he realized who he was. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? There's a written history all about his ancestors that he was able to look at that they hear from you and I to see how great they were. He knew about Abraham. He knew about Enoch. He knew about, you know, Noah. He knew about Elijah. Hell, he knew about Solomon, a king that looks just like you and I, that was the wisest human being that ever walked on this earth. And all he did for us was lay out a manual for us, a study guide, a book of information, a book of understanding, a book of training, a book of strength, a book of courage, a book of resilience, a book of determination, a message full of answers. I'm asking you, my young brothers and sisters, to take a moment, pull back just for a second, and look beyond what you see. Look inside yourself, all that emptiness that has misguided you, that has caused you to hate yourself, hate your, 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 your brothers and sisters of Israel. I ask that you would take just a moment, take a little time to yourself, and I want you to go to this, this book of tremendous knowledge, tremendous information. 
<laughs> but <laughs> that's going to remind you that you came from kings and queens. A book that reminds you that nothing is impossible for you if you know where to look. A book that tells you that no matter what anyone tries to do to discourage you, to try to tie you back, hold you back, or lock you up, or lock you down, this book is all the answers aligned to show you not only how to fight through it, but to overcome it and walk like men and women a proud people because that's where you're from there's no nation on this earth ever has been ever will be that's greater than your ancestors but you don't know that because they hid it from you they gave you lies lies all written in new testament religion told you that don't stand up for yourself don't have courage don't stand up for your people to find some you know, infeminize man and trust that man and not trust your creator. Not trust, not trust the one who loves you with everything that's in him because he created you. And they knew when they gave us the lies and the deception of new books, New Testament books, the Quran, other books. They knew that if, if they could just introduce that to your ancestors, that those ancestors could be coming on to pass it right down to you. Hopelessness. Nobodyness. Wait till you die to get it. Well, your brother is telling you this night that don't believe those lies anymore. Don't give up. Better say it. Stop for a minute and reflect. Read about your history. Find out who you actually are. Understand where this debt and mayhem came from. Yeah, the creator allowed it to happen to you. He allowed it to happen to my generation and my mother's generation, my grandmother's generation, and many other generations before them. Because they all were led astray through religion. And now they got you saying, oh, I don't need him. I don't need a creator. All I have to do, I got to figure out how to grind that. I got to do what I got to do. I got to chase the money. I got to chase, you know, the streets. I got to trace, you know, mayhem. Only to end up where you actually are. For every problem, there's a solution. There is a solution. For every cause, there is a reason. They just don't want you to think about it. And how can you think about it if you have no idea about it? Your brother is here. Your brother is on this platform. Your brother is teaching. Your brother is peeling back the layers. Your, your brother is exposing wickedness for what wickedness truly is. And who are the true perpetuators of this wickedness? Your governments. Your 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 spiritual so-called leaders. They're not leaders. They're self-serving degenerates who are only seeing you as a means to an end. And if you accept that and you embrace that or you run from the creator because of that, then that pain, that hurt, that spirit of being desolate, that spirit of hopelessness, it will never change. You will die empty. But if you pull back just for a moment and think and reflect and listen and then go to our book, we call it the Tanakh, your book, Israel, and begin to read that book with an open mind and an open heart. Be okay with pushing back all of the religious dogma, all the things that you were told, all the things that you were taught, all the things that you were socially engineered to believe about yourself, which is you are nothing. All lies. All put together for your demise. So I'll say to you again, my young brothers and sisters, no, the creator loves you because he's in you. You're the apple of his eye. You're the chosen one. We are. 
And as we run out of time in these last and evil and wicked days, we don't have the time to continue to hit ourselves through the lies that we were told by those we trusted. I'm asking you to stop again, reflect for a moment, give yourself a chance, find out who you truly are, find out where you came from, find out what courage looks like, daughter's design, what true beauty looks like, womanhood, manhood. Find out what, it, you, what, what, ne what is necessary for you to be the head and not the tail. This book we call it Zanak. It's accessible to each and every one of you. But you have to stop for a moment. As I was saying, you have to pump the brakes. Yes, I know all your life they've been trying to put you down. They've been trying to put me down too. I know how you feel. I know the pain. I know the stuff. I know the words. I know the concern. I know the hurt. I know the pain. I know the loss. I understand the lack of gain. And what that means every day when you're out here struggling to survive. But I also know it doesn't have to be that way. I also know that if we was to stop your elders and ask you, how can we help you? And listen to you. Then I believe if we were to do that, then you would trust us. So that's what I'm doing. I'm asking you to stop for a moment to listen and re-engage. Re-engage us, your elders, those of us who are in the right mind, who are not socially engineered, pausing through bad food, bad religion, bad doctrine, bad, poor history, and a, a educational system that was set in place to keep you a slave. A slave to this system, a slave to poverty, a slave to hunger, a slave to, to, to abandonment. I'm asking you again to reconsider just for a moment and take a second look at the truth. Not only the truth of who you really actually are, but who your creator is and how your creator feels about you. No, our creator has not neglected you because of bad information or misinformation or lies and falsehood. You were trained to disrespect him. And who gets respect without getting respect? He loves you so much that he's jealous for you. And in that jealousy, he stepped back and said, okay, you don't want me, then I don't want you, so I'm going to let you see how this world is going to treat you without me. So I'm saying to you, my young brothers and my young sisters, wherever you might be, whatever situation or state that you're in, it does not matter if you open your heart and give yourself an opportunity to re-engage who you are and who your creator is. You know, we're here for you. Some of us. I know there's the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the L. Sharptons and the, you know, and the Roland Martins and, you know, whoever they may be. We got your back. We want you. We love you. You know, you just got to listen to us. Just obey. Be obedient. Be a slave. I want to say it to you right now. If I wanted to be vulgar, I would tell you, you know, <laughs> Forget them. But I wanted to say another word that began with an F. Them. Come back to Yah. Find yourself again. Maybe some of you say, well, I ain't never known myself, brother DFG. I understand too. I didn't either. I chased everything moving in those streets trying to find my way. And I fought every battle that I needed to fight to stay here to this time in my life right now. And I will tell you, if you were to ask me right now, Brother DFG, what means the most to you right now? What's the, what do you treasure more than anything else? You know what I will tell you, young brothers and sisters? I treasure you. I treasure our people, wherever you are on this flat earth. I treasure you. 
Because you matter to Yah, therefore you matter to me. No, we haven't, you know, for, we have abandoned you because we forgot ourselves. So I'm saying to you again, let us re-engage you so we can learn ourselves, be a better example for you, and without question, turn you back to the kings and queens that your ancestors were. And as that clock ticks on you, every day, every year, I want you to understand, don't delay, don't wait, don't hesitate. Stop for a moment, just for a moment, and turn around and open up this Tanakh. I promise you, there are victories, there are stories, there are accomplishments. Yeah, there's some suffering and there's some pain. But all of that stuff was done because he loves you, our creator. I'm talking about Yahuwah. So this message is going to be short, brief, sweet, whatever you want to say. But it means nothing if you will not hear. And if you will not hear, your life will stay in the conditions that it currently is in. Not because there is no love for you. It's just because you didn't understand the greatest love of all. And that is the one who created you. So I'll say this to you again, my brothers and sisters. One time, give yourself a chance. Step back. This book is going to tell you all about manhood, it's going to teach you about womanhood. It's going to teach you about being courageous. It's going to teach you the importance of family and tradition and custom that has nothing to do with religion. It has everything to do with life, a full life, a life of meaning, a life of purpose, or a guarantee that if you would just stop again, just for a moment, and ask yourself a basic question. Is this the life that I was chosen to live? Or is the life, or is this the life that was put before me and told me I had no other alternative but to live? Our creator is waiting. All you have to do is stop for a moment. And give him a chance. Engage him. Because he will definitely engage you. And I'll leave you with this one verse of scripture. If you don't listen to anything else your big brother says. Your elder says. Remember this. That our book talks about. In, well matter of fact I'm going to give you two things to reflect upon. First he says that you his people. Those who he identifies with. Well, take a moment of humbleness, which means reflection. And pray, which means communicate. Then, be disgusted with the life that you're living. In essence, he says, turn away from the wickedness that's all around us. The wickedness that has been laid out before us like filthy slop for us to eat as though we were pigs. He said, if you were to do that, he said, if you were to seek his face and the way you find him is in your history book. He said, know what he would do, my brothers? He would change your outcome, sisters. And not only that, he said, what? He would solve, he would heal you. That's what he said. I would actually heal you. Not just from the pain that you're dealing with, but heal you and restoring you back to kings and queens, royalty. The true man and woman of this flat earth. That's Second Chronicles 7 and 14. And he gave you one more guarantee, little brothers and little sisters. Older ones too in case it applies to you. He said that his presence goes throughout this whole earth. And he's looking for that man, that woman, that young man, that young woman. He says, I'm looking for you. 
I just want your heart to be for me. He said, because if your heart turns back to me, I will show you the strength that I have that I'm more than willing to replace back or restore back in you. That's 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. That's a guarantee. So that being said, my little brothers and sisters, remember, this hopelessness that you're feeling, it doesn't have to be that way. The fight that you're fighting, you can win. But that winning way is a way, a way of redemption, is a, is, is a way of rediscover. It's a way of, of, of passion and love and determination and resilience. It's his way for you. The whole book is written for you. Everything about this book is about you. I want you to take some time to reflect and ask yourself the question. Is it worth it to me to learn about him so he can make it about me? That's all I have for you. We're here. This channel is here. You know, my older brothers and sisters, I hope you take the time and share this message with them. Because we're equally responsible for the conditions that they're dealing with. All the things that we hate about, you know, this society. All these things that we despise. That this, this despise. And, and, and we're disgusted about. We own some of that. Because we didn't do our part in learning about who we are. So how could they know who they are? Religion is not going to do it. Believing in a man who died on a tree or hung on a tree, it's not going to solve it. If it was going to solve it, it would have solved it a long time ago. When all else fails, what does a, a smart woman or, or a smart man do? They try something else. Help them. Help our children. Do you love them? Or are you just satisfied of just, you know, bringing about curses against them because of their behaviors, never identifying who is the originator of those behaviors? No, we're not responsible for what they do, but we are accountable for what they do. And that accountability starts with teaching, training, loving, obedience, recognition of our hardships with a clear understanding of the scholarship of knowing that you are great, you've always been great, but you just lost your way. I hope at least you'll consider. I hope that you'll find in your heart to share this message with them. I even hope that you would take the time and say, hey, look, I don't have all the answers. I don't know the book. I don't, I don't, I'm still growing and learning too. So here's what I, I'm going to suggest. This brother, their brother, is going Hardcore going all in with lessons that can teach them about us, about who we were, who we can be, with guarantees and certainties that will solve the suffering, the pain, the hurt, the damage. We're past the time of fault. We've got to get to the place of understanding. And there is no understanding except there be something to stand for or stand upon. And that's why Yah's Torah, his Tanakh, and his Apocrypha books come into play. We tell them they're beautiful stories and we teach them Wednesday nights. Stories of victory and accomplishments. Warding off wickedness and evil. Fighting back. Taking a stand. Being principle driven. Understanding, no, we're not destitute. No, we're not heathens, wildlings, beasts, whores, bums and thugs, 
We're just a people that's missing something. And it's time for us to find out exactly what we're missing. And the way we're going to do that, if we're going to join mind, heart, and soul together, and we're going to learn about who we are. Because our Creator left a roadmap to lead us right where we should be and can be. We've been. And we can do it again. Thank you for taking a moment to listen to your brother. Again, it means nothing if you do nothing with this information. Let's re-engage. Let's turn back. Let's open up our hearts. Let's find out these answers that we're looking for. Why my brother died? Why my sister died? Why I was born into poverty? Why do I have to live, you know, in depression? A constant state of insecurity, uncertainty. Feeling vulnerable, feeling victimized to the degree that I have to do anything, even things that are despicable to survive. Let's end the madness. Let's come back together. Sisters, mothers, brothers, fathers, let's man up. While we still have time. Because we can take this whole evil, wicked system down. By just a discovery, just discovery, just discovery. Just learning. Just recognizing. Just embracing. Who we are. Who we are. And what he has in store for us. If we would just take a moment. To reconsider. This is your brother DFG. Consider. Shabbat. Shalom.